Good day, good day everyone, and once again we're back together and uh, judging by the comments that I've been seeing, uh, some calling for calculus and optimization, so I thought I would just skip the other questions and just go into this and then I'll do the other questions a little bit later on. Alright, so let's get right into this question uh, on calculus. Right, so they say to us uh, on 7.1, um, so we want to get uh, f dash x, okay, using first principles. So in this case, we know that when we've got f of x, okay, uh, which is minus 2x squared uh, minus 1. Now remember, when we're getting f dash x using first principles, right? We always need to specify it's the limit as x tends to 0, right? You do not uh, uh, change this, rather, it's the limit as h tends to 0, sorry. Um, right, of f of x plus h minus f of x, all right, divided by h. Now, let's try by all means. In this case, of course, we can't substitute for f of x yet. So we're going to say this is limit as h tends to 0, right? So everywhere where we see x in our function, we're going to put x plus h. So we're going to say this is negative 2 into x plus h squared minus 1, right? Minus the original f of x, which is minus 2x squared minus 1. Okay, all of that divided by h. So let's try by all means uh, to simplify as much as possible, right? Remember, you don't drop this expression for as long as you haven't substituted for h as yet. Right, so we're going to get negative 2 into, uh, this is going to be x squared, and the middle term x multiplied by h multiplied by 2. So that's going to be plus 2xh right um, and then plus in this case sorry uh, we've got h squared so plus h squared right so we still have that minus one so that's minus one and in this case negative times a negative will give us a positive so that's plus 2x squared okay plus one okay so uh, in this case we definitely on the right track so we're going to say, well, limit as h tends to 0, okay? So we multiply by that negative 2 there. So that's negative 2x squared minus 4xh, right? Uh, minus uh, 2h squared, okay? Minus 1 plus 2x squared uh, plus 1. Now let's try and simplify this. Okay, by getting rid of all the like terms. So you can see how uh, this, and I want to do it in another color, right? Negative 2x squared will actually cancel with that. Negative 1 with positive 1 there, right? So you are left with minus 4xh uh, minus 2h squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take h out as a common factor. So that's limit as h tends to 0, right? Once we take h out as a common factor so that it cancels with the 1 uh, at the end, right? So that's minus 4x, uh, so that's negative 4x minus 2h, right? So remember in this case we, take, we took h out as a, uh, you know, as a common factor, right? Divided by H. Now, in this case, of course, the H cancels out. So in the next step, we don't need to put this expression anymore because we're now going to substitute a zero where we see H. So we've got minus 4X, right? Minus 2 times 0, okay? So it, which means that F dash X will definitely be equal to minus 4X. All right, I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. All right, definitely we are expecting that uh, we will get minus 4x there. And that is how the cookie crumbles, right? Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Now, they say to us for 7.2, uh, 
they say we need to find f dash x, right? If it's given that f of x is minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared, right? Okay, so there we've got it. Um, so that's 7.2. So they say we've got f of x, all right? Uh, in fact, I should have just taken this down. Um, minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared. So that's minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared. Right, so we're looking for uh, the derivative in this case. Right, so what we're going to do, we know that we always jump down and minus 1. So we're going to say 3 times negative 2, that's negative 6. Okay, 3 minus 1 is 2. So that's minus 6x squared uh, plus... Now again, jump down, that's going to be 3 times 2, that's going to be 6x, that, right? 2 minus 1 will give us 1. So in uh, in this case, that will be minus 6x squared uh, plus 6x. Okay, so that is how we'll get the derivative there, right? Okay, so uh, the next question, okay, that was 7.2.1. Right, so they say to us, uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to remove this um, and take it down, right? Uh, right, yeah, this guy always kind of gives me a little bit of an issue. Right, so uh, let's take it down so that we are able to just follow in what we're doing. Right, so we are looking for, all right, let's just make the circle bigger. All right, so we're looking for uh, the next one, which is dy dx, right? So 7.2.2, okay? So they said, so first of all, we need to get y uh, in terms of, um, you know, uh, exponents with no uh, fractions, right? So let's do that first. So we've got 2x plus, that's 1 over root of 4x, all right, so let's try and simplify that. So that's 2x plus, now in this case, square root of 4, right? So that's 1 over 2, right, multiplied by root of x, okay? So what we can do there, okay, square root of 4 is 2, and uh, square root of x is square root of x, right? So we need to write that as an exponent in this case, and not a third anymore. So that's going to be 2x plus. This is 1 over 2. But when we write this as an exponent, remember that a third, uh, we've got a, a 2 there. Okay, so that's a 2 there and a 1 there. So that becomes a 1 over 2x and 1 over 2. Okay. So remember that this becomes your denominator and this one becomes your numerator of the power in this case, right? So that's 2x to the power, in fact, let me just write it more nicer, right? So that's 1 over 2x to the exponent 1 over 2, right? So I'm just dragging this so that I just uh, show you, right? So this is the same as saying 1 over 2, Right, now I'm going to take this exponent to the top, or rather, um, in this case, uh, uh, yeah, this power to the top. So in this case, that becomes x to the minus 1 over 2. Okay, please keep that in mind. Right, when I, once I take it to the top, it actually changes sign. Right, so now that we've got y as uh, in exponential form, in this case, uh, now we can find what the derivative is. So that's dy dx. So that's the derivative with respect, the derivative of y with respect to x. So this will be 2. So remember, we said this jumps down. 2 times 1 is 2. Right, minus 1, that becomes 0. So that actually becomes just 2. Okay, now again, we're jumping down, right? So that's minus a half times 1 over 2. That becomes minus 1 over 4, right? X, okay? 
so this becomes negative a half minus one okay so in this case that would be minus three over two okay so that is uh, what that becomes right if we want to take it back uh, to third form uh, this will be uh, 2 minus 1 over 4, okay? And this will be exponent or, or x to the power or to the exponent 3 over 2, okay? And if you really must, then you can write it uh, in this manner. Uh, so that's minus 1 over 4, okay? So... Remember, the denominator becomes the root, so that's the root of 2 of x to the exponent 3. Okay, right, so you can write it this way, or you can actually leave it uh, in what we had uh, over there. Okay, right, and so that's what uh, it becomes. Right, ladies and gents, let's go on to the next one. Okay, hope that makes sense. Now, they say to us, we've got the graph of y is equal to f dash x. Now, remember, this is not related to any of the questions that we had above, right? So, they say we've got a graph of y is equal to f dash x, which has a minimum point of uh, 1 and negative 3. Now, remember, the graph they are giving us is a graph of f dash x, right? So, uh, so that's 7.4 right at uh, 7.3 rather uh, so the graph they are giving us is a graph of f dash x i need to emphasize that so they're telling us in this graph okay um where whatever that graph looks like it has a minimum uh, 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 point turning point at one and negative three right so that's one and negative three somewhere there right so that means that this is what this graph actually looks like right they're talking about a turning point so that is the turning point of the graph right so remember what does this graph represent the derivative right so that's one and negative three right so they want to know in this case Determine the values of x for which uh, f, right, is concave down, right? Now, please, I want you to note, when is the graph concave down, right? So, when the double derivative, now, please, I want you to remember this, right, that the moment we've got, uh, say, here's a cubic function there, all right, so when it's concave down uh, in this case, right, we know that our uh, double derivative, right, double derivative would actually be less than zero. Okay, so if we uh, work out the double derivative in this case, we'll get a negative there, right? So we know in that case it would be concave down, but for concave up, right, uh, in this case, we know that the double derivative uh, would be greater than zero. Now, please, I want you to listen carefully, ladies and gents, right? What is the double derivative, right? It is the derivative of the derivative. Now, I want you to note, so it's the gradient of the f dash x graph, okay? So, in this case, where is this graph, um, uh, you know, where is the gradient of this graph positive right of this graph f dash x now i want you to note where is the graph an increasing function i want you to note in this case from the turning point all the way up as it goes to infinity in this case right so it means that uh, between this point from the turning point our gradient f pr f double prime so it's the derivative of the derivative because this graph already uh, represents the derivative so it's the derivative of the derivative right uh, it represents in this case a positive and increasing function right so we can say well f double dash now remember 
uh, they said to us, where is it concave down, right? And remember we said for concave down, uh, the double derivative is actually negative. So that means uh, over here, it would be positive, but from here going all the way, or from negative infinity all the way, this graph is a decreasing uh, function. So that means that um, that would be a decreasing function there, f double dash would be negative. Um, remember, so this would represent the point of inflection because the derivative in this case would be equal to zero. So it would be the derivative of the derivative. So remember that, okay? So that means where is the graph concave down, right? So this would be for x is an element, okay? So for x is an element of negative infinity, okay, all the way to x is equal to 1. And we don't include that because uh, that it, uh, it is not negative at that point. Okay, right. So I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Right, I tried to explain it. Uh, remember, again, this is the graph of the derivative. So we are taking the derivative of the derivative. I hope that makes sense. And uh, we'll uh, come back again uh, with the next question on calculus. And then we are going to look at optimization as the last one that we look at uh, just before we go back to the other questions. Shop, shop.